Welcome to our weekly online preaching and our weekly prophetic release. Now, today's lesson is one of the most important lessons, yet one of the most basic for every one of us believers. The importance of guarding your thought life. Now, before I continue, this is what the Lord has spoken. There is a battle happening in the minds of many of my people. Choose to believe in the truth of my word and cast down every argument that is contrary to my word. For my word brings life and my word brings shalom peace. Set your mind on what my word says about you, not what man says or what the devil says. Recently in the spiritual realm, the enemy, the devil, the power of darkness has been trying to hijack, oppress, or even torment many of God's people's minds. This is a time to be on guard. This is a time to be extra vigilant and careful and guard your thought, guard your thought life because the devil is going around all out like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. And one of the ways that the devil does is by influencing the mind of God's people. So you got to guard. It's a battle. It's a battle between God's word and the enemy's word. Now, 2 Corinthians 10, verse 4 to 5 says this, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments and every high thing that absorbs itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Now, by the way, the word thought here is noema in Greek, and it can mean the mind. So thought and mind, these two words, are used interchangeably in the context of what we are learning today. Now, I want to bring you to 2 Corinthians 10, verse 4 to 5. Now, is the expanded Bible's version. We fight with weapons that are different from those the world uses, not merely human weapons, not of the flesh. Our weapons have power from God that can destroy the enemy's strong places, strongholds, fortresses. We destroy people's arguments, human reasoning, sophistries, and every proud thing, pretension, exalted opinion, high thing that raises itself against the knowledge of God. We capture every thought and make it obey Christ. Now, this is so clear, the expanded Bible's version. Now, people of God, God has given you a very powerful weapon. You and I as believers, we have this, the Word of God. The Word of God is like a sword that slay every argument and high thing that exalt itself against the knowledge of God. And when you wield this sword, when you use this weapon, no matter what happens and no matter what the world says about you, no matter what the enemy, the devil says about you, you have the upper hand because the word of God has already promised you. The word of God from the beginning to the end has already assured you of your ultimate victory, your final victory. When Jesus died on the cross, on the third day, he rose again. He has defeated death. He has defeated every power of darkness. And therefore, in Christ, you too have that victory. Jesus has already won that victory for you. So the battle in your mind is such that you've got to believe this. Because when you believe in what the Word of God says, the enemy, the devil, will have no way to penetrate or to oppress or to hijack or to torment your mind. So you've got to set your mind on the things of God, on the Word of God, and everything is going to be all right, and you are going to start to see many more breakthroughs 
and victories in your life. Joshua 1.8 says this, This book of the law, the scripture, shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. Now, the word meditate here is haga in Hebrew. It can mean to ponder. It means ponder on the word of God, to study the word of God. But it can also mean all this, to talk about the word of God, to speak the word of God, to utter the word of God. It means to speak aloud, speak it out, or to mutter the word of God. To mutter means to speak under your breath. So this word haga has quite a broad meaning here. People of God, Today, I want to zero in on one aspect of this broad word, haga, meditate. That is to mutter, to speak under your breath, to say what the Word of God says. And there's something powerful when you speak out the Word of God. Because when you speak out the Word of God, faith arises. Because Romans chapter 10, verse 17 says, Faith comes by hearing, hearing comes by the Word of God. And even as you speak out, your eyes are reading the word, your mouth is speaking it out, and your ears are hearing it. So you are using more than one sense. You are using three senses. And to take in actively the word of God. So that's very powerful. I'm going to demonstrate to you later on how I've learned all these years since I was a young believer to meditate on the Word of God, and it works. Now, for example, Jeremiah 29, verse 11. I read from New King James Version first. God says, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. Now, what happens if I personalize Jeremiah 29, 11 for myself? It can sound like this. God's thoughts toward me are thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give me a future and a hope. Now you see, God's thoughts toward you are thoughts of peace and not of evil, of future and hope. Now, as you meditate on this, not only ponder, not only read silently, not only study the word, but as you speak it out for your ear to hear. You see, faith comes by hearing. Hearing comes by the word of God. Or as you utter it out, or you mutter it. Now, maybe you are driving a car, or you are doing some housework, house chores, or you are uh, just sweeping the floor or vacuuming the floor. You can actually mutter the Word of God, so that you can set your mind on the Word of God instead of allowing your mind to just wander everywhere. So what I will do is I will just say, God's thoughts toward me are thoughts of peace and not of evil. That gives me a future and a hope. God's thoughts toward me are thoughts of peace and not of evil. That gives me future and hope. God's thoughts toward me are thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give me a future and a hope. So if as I mutter it, as I keep speaking out under my breath many times, God's thoughts towards me are thoughts of peace and not of evil, that gives me a future and a hope. God's thoughts towards me are thoughts of peace and not of evil, that gives me a future and a hope. And I realize that God mean his words god's presence because god will always back up his word god may not back up man's words but god will always back up his word amen now as you go back to the slide here on jeremiah 29 verse 11 now god's thought toward you are thoughts of peace and not of evil now the word peace here many of you know that this word is shalom in hebrew which can also mean wholeness, wellness, health, wealth, safety, prosperity, favor. You know it, that this word shalom 
is a very broad word. Now, what happened if I put all these meanings into the word peace there in Jeremiah 29 verse 11? Then it will go this way. God's thoughts towards me are thoughts of wholeness. God's thoughts toward me are thoughts of wellness. God's thoughts toward me are thoughts of health, good health. God's thoughts toward me are thoughts of wealth. God's thoughts toward me are thoughts of safety. God's thoughts toward me are thoughts of prosperity. Now, I don't mean just financial prosperity, but how about wealth of wisdom, wealth of uh, good things in your life? Uh, how about wealth of revelation? And God's thoughts toward me are thoughts of favor. Wow. In other words, He sees you whole. He sees you well. He sees you healthy. He sees you wealthy. He sees you safe. He sees you prospering. And He sees you favored. Hallelujah. Now, people of God, imagine you mutter it over and over again throughout the day. Say just this one verse, Jeremiah 29, 11, just one example. God's thoughts towards me are thoughts of peace and not of evil. That gives me a future and a hope. God's thoughts toward me are thoughts of peace and not of evil. That gives me a future and a hope. One more time. God's thoughts toward me are thoughts of peace and not of evil. That gives me a future and a hope. In other words, God sees me whole. God sees me well. God sees me in good health. God sees me in good wealth. Wealth of wisdom, wealth of revelation, not just material things. God sees me safe. Wow. God sees me prospering. And God sees me favored. Now, when you begin to speak this way, something change. Your mind will attract your mind will attract the good things in the spiritual realm now i remember very well when i was a young believer a good teacher of the word used to say things like this flower attracts butterflies rubbish attracts flies this is an analogy in the natural realm flowers will attract butterfly by the same token when you have good thoughts like flower you know have you ever go into the garden and take time to smell the fragrance of flowers in the garden is beautiful take some time to smell the flowers don't be always rushing in your life take time to smell the flowers now back here when you have flower you will attract butterflies the same thing it is in the spiritual realm when your thought is full of good thoughts the word of god god's thoughts amen you are going to attract angelic realm angels will work for you angels will minister for you amen but if your thoughts is full of negativity and you allow all the negative thoughts maybe you have been reading the news of the world too much or watch too much of the of the worldly news in TV and you become negative maybe you have been reading about uh, worldly economic reports worldly political turmoil and all the bad news everywhere and you become negative and when you allow that to happen to your mind it's like a rubbish and rubbish will only attract flies rubbish will not attract butterflies and that brings us to the next Bible verse, Philippians 4, verse 8. I'm reading from New King James Version. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, see, good report, if there is any virtue and if there's anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things see the word meditate on these things now if i personalize it for my life for philippians 4 8 it may go like this i think only of those 
things which are true, noble, just, pure, lovely, and of good report. I think of those things which have virtue and are praiseworthy. Amen? Now, by the way, I'm not teaching you about escapism. I'm not teaching you about running away from reality. I'm teaching you that in spite of whatever that happens around you in the world, whatever situation around you in the world, you choose to believe in the Word of God and you choose to speak and think about the Word of God, what God says about you, what God says regarding your life. And God cannot lie. If you believe you are going to receive all those promises of God in your life through the word. And that's what Jesus said to his disciples. If you abide in my word, that's in John 8 verse 31 to 32. If you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth. The word of God is the word of truth. And the truth shall make you free. Free from what? Free from whatever oppression of the devil, tormenting of the devil, or whatever works of darkness of the devil that try to hijack your mind. Because the devil knows when he got your mind, gotcha. When he got your mind, he got you. That's how important it is. That's why it is so important to guard your thought life, to guard your mind. And all these Bible verses that I share with you are confirming all that I'm speaking to you. Now, whatever I say here is what God says. It's not my idea, it's God's idea. Let's go to the next example here. One of my favorite Bible verses, Isaiah 26, verse 3. I'm reading from New King James Version. You will keep him in perfect peace, perfect shalom, whose mind is stayed on you, O Lord, because he trusts in you. Now, so how do I personalize Isaiah 26 verse 3 for my life? It can be this way. God keeps me in perfect peace. Shalom, shalom, perfect shalom. Because my mind is stayed on him and I trust in him. So that's how I learn to meditate on the word of God, to mutter it under my breath, to speak under my breath. And I will say things like this. God keeps me in perfect peace because my mind is stayed on Him and I trust in Him. God keeps me in perfect peace because my mind is stayed on Him and I trust in Him. God keeps me in perfect peace because my mind is stayed on Him and I trust in Him. Next example, Colossians 3 verse 2. Set your mind on things above, not on things on the earth. Now, how do I personalize it? Colossians 3 verse 2, it can be this way. I set my mind on the things above and not on things on the earth. I set my mind on the things of God. So people of God, got it now? It is about speaking what God speaks. It is about saying what God says and let it saturate and fill your mind and fill your thought. Now, as you speak the word of God, life flows. Because the word of God is word of life, not just word of truth. Now, how about this verse, 2 Timothy 1, verse 7. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. So how do I personalize it? 2 Timothy 1, verse 7. It can be this way. God has not given me the spirit of fear, but he has given me the spirit of power and of love and of a sound mind. Now, for this verse in 2 Timothy 1, verse 7, let's say together with me. God has not given me the spirit of fear, but he has given me the spirit of power, of love, and of a sound mind. One more time. God has not given me the spirit of fear, but he has given me the spirit of power and of love and of a sound mind. One more time. God has not given me the spirit of fear, but he has given me the spirit of power and of love and of a sound mind. Hallelujah. So you go back to the slide here in 2 Timothy 1.7. You see, spirit of power, spirit of love, and sound mind. 
Amen. So right now, wherever you are watching, receive the power of God, receive the love of God, receive the mind of God, the mind that will make the right decision at the right time in your life. Amen. Always remember this. The word of God is your sword. As you use this sword, you can slay every work of darkness. And that is what 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5 says, that the word of God is your weapon that casts down every argument and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Hallelujah. So I just give you five examples, five Bible verses. You can always add to the list. What have been the Bible verses that God has spoken to you recently? Personalize it and meditate on it. Speak it again and again. Now, never underestimate the Word of God. John 8, verse 31 to 32. Then Jesus said to those Jews who believed him, if you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free, like what I've said earlier. Now, what does the word abide here mean? The word abide, if you abide in my word, Jesus says, it means if you stay with my word, if you dwell in my word, if you continue to endure with my word, and keep your mind set on my word. That's how the truth will just flow. And this truth will set you free. Now, as a matter of fact, it is much, much better to meditate on God's word, the word of truth, than to meditate on world news. Now, people of God, why do I teach all that I've taught just now? Simply because the Lord has spoken like what you have read earlier, the words from the Lord. The Lord has spoken that this is the time many of His people are battling in their minds. They are facing a lot of uh, negative thoughts, maybe tormenting thoughts, maybe worrying thoughts, anxious thoughts, all kinds of negative thoughts that the world try to dump on them. Now, maybe you are one of those but as I say to you just now, fear not, for God has given you the spirit of power, love, and sound mind. And before I close, I want to pray for you right now. Maybe some of you, you have been facing the situation that I've mentioned just now. Maybe recently you have been overcome by negative thoughts. Maybe recently you have been battling with anxiety, anxious thoughts, or worrying thoughts, or whatever negative thoughts that torment your mind. Right now, in the name of Jesus, we take authority. Yes, we come against all these negative thoughts that is being sent by the enemy. We push it back to the origin right now. In the name of Jesus, we uproot all these negative thoughts and cast it down to the sea. And right now, I pray for God's people that they will be filled with the Word of God. Their mind will be set on the Word of God. Their mind will agree with what the Word of God says, not agree with what the world says or what man says or what the devil says about them, but they will agree with what the Word of God says about them as they say what God says regarding their life, as they speak what God speaks regarding their life, through the Word of God, I pray right now, they are beginning to walk into the realm of victory and breakthrough in their lives. In Jesus' mighty name, Amen. So people of God, even though my teaching today is basic, but it is a very, very crucial teaching at this time. And this is super crucial because it will make a way for greater things ahead for you. And it is as simple as the Word of God. This is the sword 
of your spirit. Say that power of darkness with the word of God. Remember the word of God and of course the spirit of God. And as you read the word of God, let the Holy Spirit enlighten your eyes of understanding. Let the Holy Spirit teach you. Let the Holy Spirit speak to you as you read the word of God. So of course, if anything, do contact us. If you have any prayer requests, you want us to agree together with you, write to us, contact us. Or if you have any Bible question that you want to ask, feel free to contact us. We can be contacted through www.trimingchrist.today. You go to the column overseers and you see all the ways you can contact us. So thank you for watching and God bless you.